Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Emmy Kirshner. And on today's show, we are kicking off the year with Nick Cavuto. He is the CEO of Cavuto X, a modern day production company and consulting firm servicing the personal brands of high performance entrepreneurs, celebrities and influencers who are dominating the attention currency of their audience. He's had the opportunity to be featured in Forbes, Entrepreneur Magazine, and Gary Vee's blog. And we talk about the one thing that you need to do to grab the attention of your audience and succeed in digital marketing for 2020. It's an incredible interview. And if you love it as much as I do, go ahead and leave a rating and a review for us and share with your friends so that you can help us grow. My name is Emmy Krishner. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. The one thing that I get asked all the time is, how do you achieve success in business and make an impact? In each episode of the Tribe of Leaders podcast, you'll hear from entrepreneurs and visionaries who share how their leadership has changed not only their lives, but the lives of everybody around them. Hey, Nick, I am so excited to have you on the podcast today and you, I feel like, are going to enlighten so much for me and all of our listeners because digital marketing feels very fuzzy and, and mystical and magical and not something that I have completely mastered yet. So one, welcome to the show. Thank you. And you're, you're welcome. And two, share with everybody a little bit about who you are and where you came from. Yeah, absolutely. So uh it's awesome to be here. I just want to say really quick, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to your crowd. I take it very seriously. And, and um, I just personally really appreciate the opportunity to, to hang with you. Uh, it's incredible what you're doing, and I'm glad to be a part of it. So really big picture for me. Um, yeah, so uh, my story is pretty unique, and I'm probably going to be a little bit more honest with you guys than maybe you're used to people being in this space, um, because I think that that's where all the the value is. Digital marketing keeps changing. And I think so do the people who understand it best. So what I've found is that by getting around the right people and by collaborating with others and having moments like this, this is kind of where the real mm -hmm. magic happens. This is where the giant leaps forward, the huge ideas, the exponential gains. That's where everything's going to start happening is when you have the right people in the mix. So I think that, you know, for me kind of going back inside of my story and where I've come from, um, you know, it started as a kid. My dad was actually a drug dealer. Now, this is like a really weird thing to talk about because this is not something right. that I've ever broadcasted, uh, you know, but like that's how my life started. My dad was 30 years old. He had just stopped uh, that part of his life. He has an eighth grade education. Um, he's an absolutely incredible person and changed his life around surely uh, after he made a decision to make some changes in his vocation. Um, but that's where I came from. So it's kind of like, Honestly, right. I mean, like tried and true entrepreneur family, uh, you know, like immigrant <laughs> grandparents, you know, like right. uh, I know what it's like to have the conversations uh, because I, I live them in my family. But certainly the stories that my grandfather and my father told, you know, where my grandfather had pennies in his pocket and five kids and like, you know, that stuff is very real. And I think that right mm -hmm. now it's so easy to win um, that we forget. Uh, where really we're coming from or what things were right. like. So I think that perspective is really important. But yeah, so um, that's kind of how life start, started for me. You know, being a, there's over, over 100 years of entrepreneurs in my family up to this point. Um, and so uh, I'm just kind of carrying that legacy. So I started actually uh, there, you know, and grew up in a really cool family atmosphere with a lot of people who were very loving. My father mm -hmm. going from making multi seven figures a year to making $18,000 a year. And when those shifts happen and you see them and you experience them as a kid, um, it's actually pretty incredible to, uh, to witness it. So um, do you want me to get into a little bit about specifically what I do at this point? Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to have you share that and, and kind of the connection between how your family as an entrepreneur and, and your dad transitioning from drug dealer to, you know, something else has really inspired you. Yeah, right on. Cool. So, so yeah. Um, so specifically with my, with my family, um, my grandfather came here when he was five years old from Italy and, uh, mm -hmm. and my grandmother is British. They actually met during world war two and they got married in London, which is really cool. So she, she was a war bride. 
And um, that's how really my, my father's family started in entrepreneurship specifically for my family right. started. And so my grandfather, you know, you were talking in the late forties, you know, had his own businesses and um, you know, was always trying to make it work. And it, you know, in that time they're, they're selling coffee and opening ice cream stores, you know, it was a totally right. different ecosystem. And um, yeah, so uh, basically long story short through all of that, you know, my grandfather ended up building about five different brick and mortar businesses. Um, and, you know, in this, in this time it was uh, convenience stores and it was food service and different things like mm-hmm. that. And um, my father, when he stepped out of uh, his lucrative career as a criminal, um, he, made a trans- <laughs> he made a transition to say, like, I've got to do something different. Here's exactly what happened. My grandfather told him, he said, you, you don't have any respect for money. So if you want to change your life around and you really want to do it, I'll pay you a dollar an hour and you have to work 90 hours a week. But, and he, I mean, which is incredible. Like, I just pause. It's huge. And my dad had to make a decision. Like, if I really want to leave this, right. uh, you know, lifestyle. I mean, he had 27 cars by the time he was 27 years old. I mean, that's, right. there's some serious stuff going on there. But yeah. there was a breaking point. And I think we all reach this point in our lives where we have to make a hard decision. And sometimes that's to give up something that we think we want for the thing that we actually need. Yeah. And what my dad needed was that discipline and that structure. And that changed the game for him. He went to work for my grandfather um, made the decision to move forward with it. Um, Mm -hmm. and to this day, I know those values that were instilled in him certainly got passed down to us kids. And, um, it's, it's really, really incredible, uh, the, the entire story, uh, around it. But yeah, my, my dad ended up taking over all the businesses and ended up making six figures again and like taking over the business. But with young kids, he kind of met another crux in the road of where he was like, okay, my kids are now becoming early teens or, you know, probably around like eight to 11 years old. And he kind of hit another one of those decision points 10 years later of, I can't keep working like this and miss out on my kids entire lives. Right. right. And um, my mom had gone back to school, you know, like there were other dynamics going on, but um, yeah, he just made a decision again to say, okay, I'm gonna have to shift. And the same thing happened. He went from making six figures, like $24,000 a year to open his own business so that he could have the own, his own hours that he needed to. And my grandfather mm-hmm. despised him for that. Um, because he's like, I built everything into you and gave you opportunity. And so for somebody who's listening right now, who feels like there's a gatekeeper in front of them and what they actually want to do again, yeah. it always comes down to hard decisions. You know, you got to give up the thing you maybe think you want for the thing that you actually need. And, um, I saw that play out in my life just so many different ways. Right. And, um, yeah. And, and that's a living example. You know, at 10 years old, I'm going with my dad and my dad is emptying trash cans at corporate buildings. Right. The hustle well, was different. It wasn't digital marketing. No, I wanted to say thank you for saying that because I think a lot of times we use the gatekeeper as an excuse to keep us from doing what we're really supposed to do. 100%. 100%. And like, kudos to your dad for, I mean, that's a huge decision and there's, there's risk and it's scary and giving up security and safety in some ways to start his own thing. With young kids. I mean, and it wasn't one time. Yeah. It, it happened twice, you know, and <laughs> I'll say this, you're yeah. not a real entrepreneur until you failed once. Right. And that's something I think people need to hold on to because again, it can feel so simple. Like there's so much opportunity, like the pie is so damn big that like, it's just going to be really simple in order for me to get to where I want to go. And I can just make 10 K a month. Like that is absurd. Like $35,000 a year in the U S is the top 1% on the planet. $410,000 in the U S is the top 1% of the population of the United States. So if you're a quarter of the way there, you're so far ahead of the rest of the world. But a lot of times, again, I just think those things are missed and they're undervalued. So right. like when we hit these crux points of like, Oh, what do I have to give up in order to get to where I want to go? Yeah. You know, like you really have to know definitively that the decision that you're making is for something so much greater. Um, and those gatekeepers, I'm telling you, like, mm-hmm. I got a hundred stories about gatekeepers, but yeah, they're, they're <laughs> you, the you and me both. So, yeah. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you look at most entrepreneurs backstories, there's multiple failures. Yes. So it's, it's really about just failing forward. hundred um, percent and accepting it and actually failing quicker. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah and yeah. and learning from it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's dive into digital marketing. Cool. And how did you transition, grow into this being your purpose, passion, the way you help people? Yeah. So, um, all right. So this is a kind of interesting uh, frame. I actually start. So uh, at when I graduated high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Eighteen years mm-hmm. old, just kind of like whatever. So I went to college in Palm Beach and basically screwed around for two years and did nothing. I was sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, I lived in Palm Beach. Like um, uh, it was sixty thousand dollars in debt. Uh, my focus was, uh, you know, having fun, partying, hanging with girls, whatever. Like that. That was it. And I paid a huge price for that. Right. And, um, so when I got out of there, I had failed out of school with a one point six GPA. Um, basically, asked to not come back because I was underperforming. But there was a moment during the summer before I knew I would get that pushback of I think that I need to kind of go back home and I need to restart. And uh-huh. so I made a decision to do that, went back, got my associates because I had almost enough credits. So I kind of took a couple more classes and did that. And then actually went into vocational ministry, which is insane. Uh, but it was a really, really cool experience. Um, I did that for six years. And uh, okay. what's really interesting about it is there's no better place in the planet to understand live events besides Broadway. Because this I'm talking, mm-hmm. this is like huge scale. This is 10,000 right. plus people every weekend. Right, right. Um, and uh, and so to understand people, to have the opportunity to lead at a young age uh, and for people to invest into you who have high leadership capabilities because you're dealing mm-hmm. with people all the time. So six years of, you know, I'm, at, I'm 22 talking to, you know, 47 year olds who are going through a divorce. I was put in those positions. And so my life experience was like on like ridiculous. It was dialed in like so hard. I was learning so much in five years. I feel like right. I learned 50 years worth of things. And, um, that was, that was the thing of where, like I had my first opportunity to step into marketing. So I was an executive assistant for three years. I helped build that organization from a thousand people a weekend to 10,000 people a weekend in that time period. And I was running basically half of the operation of an eight figure budget behind the scenes at 24 years old. And so there's something that I taught myself that allowed me to get into that position. Why does this keep going up? That what I said to myself was in my twenties, I'm going to learn. And in my thirties, I'll earn. That's, I don't know. I Got just it. felt like, okay, that's what I'll do. So there was, there was nothing in me in my early twenties to say like, I need to make a ridiculous amount of money. I need to prove myself. I need whatever. I was like, I'm just here to just like be here, you know? And, um, stepping into ministry, I obviously didn't finish my education. So I just felt like I'm going to go all in on this and just like show up and do a great job. Mm-hmm. And, um, so they called out that potential and, um, yeah, I was an EA and then they asked me to take over marketing for the organization. I mean, this is live events. I've hosted over a thousand live events. Like there's That's amazing. Not, you can say that, right? Cause right? five every weekend for five years when you start doing the math, it's pretty crazy. So, well, and, yeah. and it's crazy having done some conference planning and event planning in my past, like stuff goes wrong all the time, no matter how well you've got the system down. It like you learn to just deal with it really quickly on the fly. So then everything just becomes seamless too. Yes. So true. The, so the agility fun. and the quick problem solving. And yeah, yeah. it's, it's totally yeah. wild. And, uh, but it was a lot of fun and there's, it was a great experience. And, uh, again, the big idea of like understanding human behavior, understanding people, mm-hmm. what their needs, desires, wants are like, that's all ministry is very rooted in psychology because you have to be good mm-hmm. and you have to understand people. You have to understand communication, yeah. right? So the kind of the list goes on, but yeah, when I, when I had an opportunity to lead marketing, um, we started doing digital marketing in 2009. So the, my first Facebook ad that I ran was in 2009, which most people didn't even know that they existed right. then, but I saw the power of it. And, um, so yeah, I had an opportunity there, which was awesome. And, uh, then I, I felt like it was time to move on to something different. And, um, I guess the, the main thing about that, and I don't know, maybe this will speak to somebody who's here today with us. Um, the reason why I left the organization was because I felt like people became a commodity for mm-hmm. the flywheel operation of it. Right. And it was kind of like you just kind of people are like gasoline and you're just like dumping it into the machine and like you're burning that gas, you're burning those people. And being so heart centered as an individual, like for me, I completely like my whole, like everything shut down. Like I had a panic attack under my desk the last weekend that I was there. And it was because that realization event of, Oh my God, 
these people are basically just part of this bigger machine and mm -hmm. there's the elite and the common man. And I hated that because I started, right. I started there by like giving away food to homeless families. Cause that's my heart. That's what I wanted to do. And I took it from zero to 200 people every single weekend, like within, I think six months. So there's always been growth patterns and marketing's always involved in that. And digital right. marketing's always been involved in that. But I think the more central point is that, um, when it comes to helping others and being there for others and helping them expand and grow and using different mm -hmm. tools, marketing was a tool in order to do that. Um, that catapulted me into the startup world, which, which is where stuff really started to change. I mean, you're, I mean to me, you're really speaking about authenticity. Mm -hmm. And that's what I get from your website and some of the research I've done on you too, is you're really all about creating authentic brands, personalities, mm -hmm. and allowing them to shine in a way that may be more challenging if they're not exceptional in digital marketing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think real and raw is better than authentic. Okay. And, and, yeah. and this is, this is why, um, behind the scenes content is so popular. This is <laughs> Gary Vee popularized it, but right. the Kardashians did before him. He just did it for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and even though it's fake, right? Like, even though we know that like Kardashians, right? Like Bravo, like all that stuff is fake. Uh, that emergence in the early 2000s, I've right. studied this quite a bit. And it's just, people have this strong desire to escape their reality, to be a part of someone else's. But what it created mm -hmm. was a whole different creative form that people are drawn to because in a world of people posting about their highlight reel, they wanted to actually see what was going on in other people's lives. Like the right. mass amounts of depression and anxiety and comparison and all this stuff, it's rampant and it's really, really sad. It's really sad. I can say thankfully, and I literally thank God for this, that I have not struggled with those things in my life, but I've also worked very, very hard to be honest with myself and to have horrible conversations with people, to tell friends I can't spend time with them anymore, to right. you know, break up with those in those relationships, to make those steps. And so you start learning the pattern of not really caring about what other people think because you have such a strong desire to be centered to who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's at the end of the day, uh, I have this framework that I've been teaching and I'll teach you guys about it today right now. I'm just gonna give you the framework. Content builds relationships. Mm -hmm. Relationships uh, uh, create trust and trust drives revenue. So a lot of us are trying to go in for the jugular kill, like CTA heavy, you know, like again, if you think digital marketing, e-com lead generation, it's all just like, it's a lot of it is really centered around what does my client want me to do for them? Oh, they need leads. So you, you right. kind of shortcut. It's like going to a bar, seeing someone attractive and just kind of like going in for the kill. Like mm -hmm. that's not going to get you anywhere. It might work like once in a blue moon. There might be a miracle opportunity for right. you but I don't bet on miracles. Like I'm, if I'm going to create a business, I'm going to bet on the things that are constant, that are reliable, that are consistent. And um, that truth is 100%. In the next 18 months, the entire infrastructure of digital marketing is going to move to relationships. And I don't just think it, I know it, but also if you follow Zucks and look at their most recent ads that they're running on TV, they're ads right. about Facebook groups. Remember, for those of you out there who are isolated and spending time by yourself every single day, locked in a room, like you are lonely. You're isolated. The world mm -hmm. is getting bigger, but the matrix is getting stronger. And so you're spending time in this kind of real life thing, um, but you're missing that human interaction. More than revenue, more than anything. I mean, you go to Maslow's thing, safety and connection are the most important things. Right. Human behavior and psychology, every, it's everything. So it's a really, really important step uh, to look at when we start looking at, you know, in real life, authenticity, what, what's really going on in our communication and digital marketing through content production. Um, it's all centered around this whole idea of behind the scenes and moving that to center stage. Right. right. Well, and I think people are craving connection mm -hmm. in a way that is different than what's been happening in the last five to 10 years. Um, Why do you think that is? I think I know, there's a couple of different reasons. I think partly because social media has grown to be this huge thing and it's so easy to compare. Um, and, and a lot of it has been very surface level. Look at me on my happy day. And, you know, they don't talk, people don't talk about when life sucks. And, 
the bottom line is no matter how positive you are and no matter how together you are, there's times when things aren't going well and everybody has shitty days, Mm -hmm. but nobody shares that. So I think the behind the scenes piece is exactly that. you, You can see the good days and the bad days and what's going on in between. And, and I think that allows people to identify. I agree with you. The number one post that everyone should go do right now is a personal story that creates transparency between you and your audience. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if it's a video or if it's a graphic or if it's a long form text, anything. Um, because the minute that you create transparency, that is the key that goes in the hole of trust. Right. Vulnerability is about trust. And it's almost like this odd exchange, this boomerang effect of like, if I trust people out there enough to just receive my truth, my message and accept me for Mm -hmm. who I am, then like what happens is there's like a 10x multiplier that goes in through that same type of interaction. So what I mean by that is I I coach people on this and I teach them how to basically start framing personal story or transparency style content for people who are ethical and want to do the right thing. This is going to get abused in the next 18 months. I'm telling you right now, people are going to pretend they're all about you, but it's totally garbage. They want you for something for them. And you've got to be aware. This is like wolf in sheep's clothing thing. You've got to be aware and you've got to know people like me are doing it because it's authentic. It's true. It's exactly who we are. I spent nine months, you know, creating this. I took 150 to $200,000 a month business and shut it down on purpose in order to do exactly what I'm doing right now, which is coaching people Mm -hmm. on content, helping them create a brand that's impossible to ignore, working with huge influencers and helping them develop their message. And the entire thesis on that was just like, what is most centered to me? I can't show up and want to be centered and teach people how to do that if I'm not willing to go first. And you know what that meant for me was shutting down a multi seven figure business. Right. And a lot of people, you got to ask yourself the question, is that something that you're willing to do? Yeah. Like coming to terms with, where you're at, what you want to accomplish, um, you know, what really that those feelings are inside of you. Again, it's just like all of this pushes up against the big idea that we are, we are massively petrified of the opinions of other people. Mm-hmm. But you know what I call that? The boogeyman. It like, is. Literally just had this conversation two nights ago. Well, and, and if you allow that, then whatever their beliefs are, what's going to keep you playing small. It, and then again, it kind of goes back to the gatekeeper piece. So clearly you keep opening the gate. <laughs> so. You have to, you have to, it's a never ending game. And in digital marketing, it's not just your skills and it's not just your ability to be a great technician. Cause if you mm-hmm. move outside of a technician, then you're going to move into an entrepreneur and that's going to be a whole different thing. They're two very right. separate things. Just cause you're good at ads does not mean you're an entrepreneur. It takes a totally different gut level to hire and fire people and to like, build a Mm -hmm. business infrastructure and to build big relationships. It's a completely different beast. Uh, Yet you can make a lot of money as a technician and like that, that can be, it is what it is. You have a very lucrative job, respect, and there's nothing wrong with that. You just got to know your strengths. Um, Right. But yeah, I think the, the thing that we get stuck on with this um, as entrepreneurs and looking specifically Mm -hmm. into digital marketing and and finding what it is that we want to accomplish, but really just as humans is when you really untap your story and you get, and I'm not talking about like how to tell your story in the hero's journey. Screw all that mm-hmm. stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. What right. I mean is when you can psychologically dig underneath, again, this is human behavior stuff, but you can go underneath your story and your experiences, the ones that have been most transformational or most, most traumatic for you. What you start realizing is your story determines your belief system. And your belief exactly. system determines your values and your values determine your actions, right? Mm-hmm. So I went through this with a guy the other night and he was like, yeah, when I was a kid, like, here's what happened. And like, there was all these expectations put on me. And like, I felt like wherever I had to go, like my parents were high profile people and I had to like put on this persona and make sure you look this way, make sure you say this stuff, make sure you're respectful. Like it was just all this pressure of external sources of who you need to be. And in that process, he completely lost his identity. And so he gave me the specific circumstance, a specific story about when he was at a public event and uh, he was with his dad and he had to show up and he had to be a certain way and all these things. Right, right. And I went behind the story and started asking him questions like, okay, well, like literally tell me about what's happening. Like, let's go back to it and experience it, like watch it like a movie. And so we went back to the moment and he's saying, yeah, so I walked in and had sit down and he kind of like looked at me like anger, like looked at me and was like, you know, 
here's what you need to do and like make sure that you don't make any noise and make sure you pay attention and make sure right like all this pressure and then turns and like like big smile to the world like just totally fake you know mm-hmm. so i said well tell me about his story your dad's story and he went into it and there were massive levels of trauma right there were massive massive levels of trauma of where this this guy was like sexually abused like his father was uh he um, he was, he, he didn't have a great education. Like there were, there were all these things, even though he's this high prominent person and he had like made it at the yeah. same time, there were all these buried insecurities that the son knew about, but like everybody else didn't because there was a mm-hmm. lack of transparency. So it creates this generational like crap of where then your kids can't show up in their full capacity because those traumas and those things and those opportunities to grow were never dealt yeah. with. So when I started going through this with him, he st- I started getting him to see it differently and to start looking at it saying, you know what? I asked him the question, all right, so with all those things being true, and we kind of went a few layers deep, I got him to the mm-hmm. point of where I said, can you see at how this could actually serve you well? Versus being like your big traumatic thing that like you can't get out right, of, right. so stuck based on the opinions of other people. He said, I think so. And I said, all right, let me unlock it for you. Do you have any empathy for your father? Like instead of being angry with him, based on the way that he treated you, like if you unlock that and go a little bit deeper, don't you feel bad? Don't you have a sense of empathy that like he had to show up in that way because he was so petrified based on the things that he was unable to accomplish? Mm Mm-hmm that it reframed and he said, holy cow, like he, the thing unlocked. So Isn't now that amazing? It's, it is so amazing. And it just takes the time, right? Of like right. going through layer by layer. And the moment that that unlocked for him, his belief system changed. So now he's not looking at it going like, my dad always wanted me to be perfect. Therefore everyone does. And right. then the next step after that was, and now his values aren't to value the opinions of people, the boogeyman. 90% of the things that will never happen. Introverts really mm-hmm. struggle with the boogeyman. Yeah. Um, and then the last step of that is then his actions are going to change. So guess what he's doing? He's creating transparent content now. Beautiful. But sometimes you have to get underneath the surface. You have to go back to hard moments and redefine them in order to reach the ultimate goal that you're, you're trying to reach. Yeah. Now, I completely agree with you. In my work with my clients, a lot of times they're, they're so wrapped up in the story of the event, whatever the thing was Hmm. that has happened to them. And that can look like any number of things. Sometimes it's really traumatic. Sometimes it's not. And, but they're so focused on that. And then the context that they're viewing everything through is through that lens. Hmm. And when you can shift it or open it up a little bit, it's like, you know, rainbows and sunshine kind of coming (laughs) in. Um, But it does, it allows people to create very differently. And from a, I think a far better, more connected space where they can really share what it is they want to get out to the world. And and a hundred percent. And I think that people are so much more willing to do more for others than they are for themselves. That if their mm-hmm. why is big enough, they'll yeah. they'll kind of put themselves into a vulnerable position so that they can serve the world in a greater way. And yeah. I've seen that happen multiple times of where through those conversations, it's like trying to get them to see the bigger picture and, and trying to get them to understand that like, if we can get over this hurdle, like the best thing for you is always on the opposite mm-hmm. side of fear and the best cure to fear is action. So right. getting, getting in those mindsets and getting those things pushed forward is certainly the number one step that you can take. And content's not yeah. going anywhere. Like it's only going to get more difficult, more competitive and more frequent. Um, Mm -hmm. So kind of, if you're running an online business, you have to make a decision on if you're willing to do what it takes in order to win 2020 and beyond, or, you know, if you're just going to stay comfy and stay where you're at and you better have a lot of really good relationships because that's just kind of how the game's going to work. And if you're listening to this, like everybody knows that I do not want you to stay comfy, like get (laughs) off your couch and go jump in some boiling water. (laughs) <laughs> because it's that's not where you're going to grow, mm-hmm. right? So I'm curious too, like for 2020, you know, what can entrepreneurs be looking at in, from a digital marketing, digital content, in addition to creating transparent content? Because it's it's not post more on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it is for some people, but 
I'll give, I'll give you guys two keys yeah. today that are really yeah, what, yeah. The, the first thing is the number one strategy that you need to have for 2020 is being top of mind. So whatever you have to do to be top of mind, you need to be top of mind. I don't care if you write. I don't care if you uh, do video production. I don't care if uh, you're going to do it in a podcast. I don't care if you're going to do it in, uh, you know, like whatever the format is, um, it mm-hmm. does not matter. But you have to be top of mind in 2020. Right. And so that's the first step is you have to agree with the fact that you have to post like more than once a week or sometimes even <laughs> once a day. Like, like I, I'm just tell, like straight up, if you don't, you're dead. I'm just telling you, yeah. it, it's, you will not exist. You will not be on people's radar. You won't be on their map and no one's going to care. Like, cause they're not going to listen to people who are a in the middle or B who are infrequent. Right. you got to be chasing influence, not money. That's what I do. I chase influence. Like this year I made a commitment. I'll speak on a hundred stages next year. That's what exactly what's going to happen. So you have to make the commitment to put yourself out there and to step out and to, you know, push yourself in that way. But yeah, you're right. It's not just posting, you know, random stuff about your cat or your food. Like right. th- this is the second key. Don't focus on demographics of people that you want to serve. Focus on psychographics. Okay. And I'm going to explain what those are for listeners who um, may have not heard the term before. So a lot of times I'll say demographics are like age, sex, location, right? You know, that right. might be the targeting options you have inside of Facebook or, uh, you know, how you might categorize a persona. <laughs> All right. So fuck that shit because that, that is not anything that's <laughs> going to help you like straight up because you need to t- tap into the subconscious of people. You have to get into their head and their mm-hmm. heart, not just put you know, you can't think of like a magazine publisher and you're like, oh, who's our target demo that we're going to send this magazine to? It's just not going to work. It's too competitive. Right, right. So when you get into psychographics, you're focusing more on needs, desires, pain points, uh, aspirations. You're focusing more so on the psychology of the individual. The reason why I'm Mm -hmm. good again at marketing has to do with because I understand people. And I, by the way, have been doing the content or the, uh, uh, like the, I've generated over $30 million in revenue for partners that I've served. I've worked with massive fortune 500 companies with startups. Mm-hmm. I've taken all of them from like totally sucking to overperforming typically in a very short period of time, like less than nine right. months from like 50% to 150%. Right. So all of that is rooted in psychology. So you've got to get underneath the surface of the things that those people want. And it's mm-hmm. what I call conscious content. You have to produce content that resonates with your truth and that's going to be a magnet right. to pull other people in. And if you're like, well, I'm not a woohoo or I'm not a creative thinker, writer, what, I, it doesn't matter. You know, I was talking to a lady the other day who was in one of my coaching workshops and she's like, yeah, the people I work with, I mean, they don't have a lot of money, but you know, like some things I like to do is like, I asked her three questions. What do you fund? Where do you frequent? And who do you follow? Mm-hmm. And I asked her those three questions and she said one of the places she goes a lot is Walmart. So now immediately I'm going like, okay, your target demo are people who like really good deals. Right. Right. So she says, I like, I like to go to Walmart and I love to, you know, whatever I, so what's her story? What are her values? What is her belief mm-hmm. system? Her belief system is, you know, it's irresponsible to waste money. So her value is I always want to get the best deal. Right. So I'm like, okay, what you need to do is go to Walmart, even though this has nothing to do with your brand. She's a doctor. Okay. She's a doctor in psychology for people who are in sports. So she's like, Okay. And she's following me. I'm like, you need to go there and you need to uh, do Facebook live videos on getting amazing deals at Walmart. And she's like, okay, (laughs) are you sure? She's like, this goes against everything that I've ever heard. I'm like, 100%. Because what's going to happen for you, the the segment of her business that she was focusing on for context was was helping uh, uh, single moms create better relationships with their kids. So single moms already, if you look at that and not to be totally generalistic, but you know, like most household incomes in the United right. States have more income if it is a dual working family. And that's been since the fifties. It's not my opinion. It's just right. that. So of course, you know, when you're maybe on a tighter budget, you have less time, you know, you're going to be looking for opportunities and deals and that's her target demo. I can tell mm-hmm. based on the psychographics, she doesn't even have to tell me exactly who she's talking to. Well, that um, happened in reverse. Being a single mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really hard the first couple of years, any way that I could save time and get a deal. Totally done. Yeah. Like, that has sign me to up. do with the product, right? That has to do with, I'm looking for two things. No, like That's I literally time. planned yeah, errands on what side of the street it was because I had a limited number of time in 
the car with two kids who didn't want to be doing the stuff that we were doing. Yep. And it was like, how fast can I get all these things done and get back before they explode? Yes. And, yes, and totally. I had great kids. Like they were great kids, but they were, you know, five and seven and boys and wanted to be <laughs> throwing footballs and running around. So no, I, I'm totally with you on that. And I mean, and this yeah. is, that was kind of the thesis that I brought her through is like, but that's your real life story. That's your real life moment. You know, like uh, there was another lady who was a mom the other day who I was talking to. She helps moms uh, earn six figures in 20 hours or less a week. Uh, her name's Katie Fleming. And um, she was talking about how she was running out of Target so she could get to our mastermind call. So she's working with other people who want to have digital businesses. I'm like, why did you not go live? Because you in Target sprinting through saying, oh my gosh, I got to get this last minute shopping done. It's the best piece of content that you could have possibly posted. Mm-hmm. Because it triggers the emotion and the... I, I f- I want to connect with you because I feel the same things that you feel, which again earns trust and then it undergirds the entire process. So with back to Dr. Michelle, I told her if you do this and you start creating this type of content, here's what it's going to do. It's going to attract everyone who's like you and repel everyone who isn't. Yeah. Just as a reminder, if you can get 50% of people to like you, you can be president. Right? So in any yeah. scenario or situation. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, literally polarize. The more you polarize, the better you're going to win. And I'm not telling mm-hmm. people like this category of people, don't be like disrespectful or anything. No, 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 you're right. But what but, I am saying is like, speak your truth. Well, and own your weird. Like we are all weird yes. in our own little way and get really super connected to that. Like my people have sit, have seen me sit in my dragon jammy suit and do Facebook <laughs> lives. That's awesome though. Like yeah. people who like that kind of stuff are going to be attracted to you twice as hard. And, and they all know that, you know, I can do the other side of the analytical and the logical piece with my ridiculous. And that's part of my charm. And that's, if you like that, get on board. And if you don't, goodbye. hundred percent. Yeah. So I totally agree with you. And I love that you're saying that too. That's awesome. It's good. It's good. It's so good. And it's so true. And I think that, um, you know, as the, as the future parts of what we do continue, yeah. people are going to want to work more and more and more. Think of the world and think of data and think of AI and where all this stuff is going. If you haven't watched a documentary on artificial intelligence recently, like, please go do it because it'll really. It, it's crazy what out. it can do. Yeah. It's- and so in a world of personalization, mm-hmm. right, where all of our data is readily accessible, everything is going to come down to personalization. And here's how you create it. It's content in context to the individual that you want to reach. Personalization is also where you're going to have high conversion. Right. So again, just don't use this information to manipulate the system. Use this to make sure that you don't do what I did, which is by accident, I built a multi seven figure business that then I closed because it wasn't serving me well. And I almost lost my family, my kids, everything, my sanity, like you name it, it was almost ready to go. And um, I think that's the big, that's the number one thing that is the scariest thing for me, for people right now is you, if you go build something that's not central to really what you love, the thing that you really makes you tick, I'm all about life teaching people lessons that they need to learn. And I think if Mm -hmm. we don't get taught them the first time, it just comes back around the second time and test over and over, right? Like until you pass, you're going to have to keep (laughs) taking it. So in one form or another. (laughs) So I went from like that to like sitting across from a friend of mine. We went to a diner and I was like, no, dude, I'll grab the tab or whatever. And I went to go pay my car. Like I, I didn't have any money. Wow. Straight up like 150K to zero, not being able to afford like a, a meal from the person across from me. And right. so that is a harsh reality, but it's also the number one thing that I want to protect people from. Because it is not worth it. Learn from my experience if you can. And you know, if the universe decides that you're the person who's got to go through this and learn it, then respect. It just is what it is. But at the end of the day, that's one of those things that I just don't want to ever learn twice. The first words out of my mouth when that happened, after my face was flushed red and I just kind of like couldn't even believe what was going on, Mm -hmm. I said, this will never happen again. Right. Two weeks later, did 100K in proposals, working with some of the biggest influencers in the video space. Um or in the entrepreneurial space and I was doing content creation for them. That happened two weeks later because I said, this will never happen again, number one. And number two, I'm never going to sacrifice really the big, I'm not going to build without intent ever again. 
I mm-hmm. happen to stumble across a great business and I have the personality and the charisma and the salesmanship and the, you know, the delivery qualities and great people around me um, to be able to, to fulfill those things. But because it wasn't centered, I had to start all over again. So again, right. if you got to learn the lesson, learn it. But if you can lean into it and say, is what I'm really yeah. doing right now really the right thing for me? There's no time. Like right. you don't have, to, it's not going to take you a year to rebuild it. I did it in two weeks. I went, to one, I went to one conference. I went to one conference. I got one person to pay me to go. Uh, he was a friend of mine and I was in his mastermind group. And I was like, dude, I'll do this for like nothing. Just like get me there. And he's like, all right. So, and again, this is like, if I wasn't willing to go back to technician after entrepreneur, cause I was too cool. I was too whatever. I was past that. I would have lost mm-hmm. miserably. I'd be like homeless right now. So I stepped out and I did it. And I went out there, recorded this dude's event. While I'm there, we create content like Gary Vee. That's what we do for influencers. And they pay six figures a year to do it. So I went there, I, I started collaborating with uh, the guy who had hired me and I brought an assistant with me. And then what happened was the conference organizer was like, can you follow around the guy who runs the conference? Cause like, we'd love that content. We, we happened stance, the videographer canceled and didn't show up. Right. 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 Yeah. So here's what happens, Perfect. right? The snowball yeah. effect. I'm in the back room with all the speakers, you know, like they're all like, what do you do, man? Like, Oh, you guys create content like Gary Vee. That's freaking amazing. Um, how can you help us do what we're doing? Like, right. I'd love to get your info from that deal. That's where we got hundred K and op from multiple different, different people that added up uh-huh. to that. And then I went to another event where one of the people who said, yes, I'll hire you to do this for us. They signed a deal while we were there, said we ran out of money for our event and we can't have you come next week. I said, I don't care. I'm coming anyway. I paid my own way. Now remember, like I just went to a restaurant with no money. Right. I like grab any credit card that has any money left on it. And I'm just like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go. Flew to New York, stayed in a hotel, did the whole thing. At that event, we've already generated, I don't even know, multi six figure off of that one event that I showed up and did for free because relationships Mm -hmm. are rocket ships and you've got to get connected with people who are like-minded, who jive with you. Everybody says this to me. It's vibe tribe. Mm-hmm. They're like, I just, I just love your energy. I trust you. Like I, I feel that. And I go back to all the different circumstances, the places I've worked and the things that I've done yeah. being an executive assistant and now being around high performers, they pick up on those small cues of things that I notice when I put the camera down because it's a sensitive moment or I put it low and still record, or I get them water when they're going out to stage. Cause they totally forgot. It's just like showing mm-hmm. up in the right capacity. And when you're in the right place and you have the right part about you, and you're not off center and you're not doing the thing you shouldn't do. It's just effortless. It's totally effortless. Now we have yeah, to turn really, it away. Right, like, right. Two months later. Well, you're, cha- you're channeling. I mean, you're, yes. you're just in the flow of everything. And I love, because I've had this happen, I've seen it happen with my clients over and over again. Once you make that decision, you're like, I am not doing this again. Like really make it, not just say it, right? Stuff just opens up for you immediately. Always. It's crazy. And I love it. Yeah, it's so good. (laughs) It's so freaking amazing. It's true. Yeah. So that's super cool. I love it. I love it. Um, We have got to wrap up. Unfortunately, I feel like we could sit here and jam like all day. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And I I love what you've shared, particularly the part about really just being transparent. Um, And I Mm. think there's so many great takeaways. You have a super cool mastermind coming up. So would you tell everybody about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I have a mastermind. It's, uh, also called a mentor mind is like the spin that I put on it. Um, back to the thesis of relationships or rocket ships after that event, actually, I realized, oh my goodness, the the number one thing that entrepreneurs are missing out on right now is community. And Mm -hmm. it's amazing when the the, the, the individual who may be facilitating or leading the group, when they don't make it about them and they make it about the other people, like, and they actually are truly authentic and real and raw and all those things in that truth, it's absolutely incredible what happens. So what I've done is I've been able to draw people who are just getting started to eight figure entrepreneurs and put them in the same zoom call every other week. Oh, cool. And so that's the real strong pull is you're getting people from multiple different angles. And I base this off of John Maxwell's principle uh, of where he said, you should never get too far away from people who are just getting started. Right. And the idea on that is like, there's a flame there and there's mm-hmm. a, uh, what I like to call the uninformed optimist, right? Like <laughs> yeah. so many of us can be like the informed skeptic, right? And uh, right. when you start, I'm so excited. 
<laughs> when you start pairing with people who are uninformed optimists who just like see the world as like grand and clear and there's no problems and like the world's my oyster usually what happens is both shift you get the what, what i like to call the uh informed optimist so now you're in a position of where you know but you're still optimistic mm -hmm. and i think that's where tremendous growth comes so I, I think that both parties need it um but at the same time like that's part of my superpower is connecting people in that way so okay. um so yeah so that's the big idea um i've been connecting uh people inside of these groups for the last quarter they fill up almost instantaneously when I push them out into the world because people know the value. Um, so inside of the groups, it's not the Nick show. This is for you. This is for you to connect with other people to yeah. uh, specifically uh, have the accountability and the growth that you need in order to get to where you want to go. Uh, mm -hmm. The amount of deals that have gone down outside of the group, I encourage them. So you're immediately going to get a return on investment if you're very clear about what you do and how that impacts the world. Because people in a mentor group, it's clear enough at the front that you're there to help one another. And what you give is what you get. And that's the beauty, beautiful thing about true generosity um, is, uh, is that boomerang effect. Um, so, right. so yeah, so uh, we have it coming up. Uh, we're going to be launching one here. Uh, like we're going to probably launch it in the next week or so. And it's going to start mm -hmm. right around the beginning of the year. But you can check mm -hmm. out my website, nickkudo.com slash mentor mind and um mm -hmm. inside of that uh page basically all the enrollments happen right through there and we, we are usually launching them every three to five weeks so oh, sweet um, so yeah so we're in a cool growth pattern there and uh it's been a lot Love of fun it. and yeah awesome awesome and where else can everybody connect with you um in addition to the website yeah. So, uh, Facebook, Facebook messenger is always a good spot to find me, uh, Instagram, okay. uh, yeah. Any social platform, obviously. Um, so at Nick Cavuto, um, and my website is nickcavuto.com and Great. yeah. And we'll have those, yeah, we'll have those links in the show notes too. So. And what I'd love to do for your crew too, Emmy is, um, yeah. I'd love to hook them up. So if you, uh, go to my, uh, my page, nickfudo.com slash tribe of leaders. I'm going to have mm -hmm. just a special thing there for you guys. It's not going to be form gated or anything. I'm just going to give right. it to you guys for free. Uh, and it'll right, be some cool. basic framework on the 13 types of entrepreneurial content that you should be creating. So this hopefully will get you guys uh, started in the right position because right from there, if you create one piece of content every day, that's two weeks worth of content um, that you can start creating and start getting familiar mm -hmm. with better ways to get underneath the surface of your prospects so that you can create a brand that's impossible to ignore. I love it. Thank you. That's very, very generous of you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's just so awesome to have you on. I really, as I said, I've enjoyed uh, chatting with you. I've enjoyed it as well. Thank you for your you're, generosity and for hosting this. Appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. And everybody listening, we will see you next week. As an entrepreneur, do you ever feel isolated, like you're just grinding away and not getting to the place or reaching the goals that you want? Maybe you've realized that you just spent days, weeks, or even months trying to accomplish something only to figure out that the answer that you have would have saved you all of that time. I know I've had that experience and my clients have as well. And that's why I created the Tribe of Leaders Biz School. Get the accountability, the training, and the knowledge base in a community of like-minded people who are there to support you. Go ahead and check it out. It's the tribe of leaders dot com.